<laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm getting all funned out. Uh oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Okay, I'll be back to check on you later. Have some popcorn, a little sippy sip of your sip stuff. And places, please! Action! Booyah, baby! Today, we are going to learn all about MLA research papers. And you know why we're learning about MLA research papers? Listen up, big guy. I got three good reasons why you should just walk away. Number one. Look at that guy. He's got that sissy stringy music thing. We've been through this. It's a harp. And you know it. All right. That's a harp. And that's a dress. Robe. Reason number two. Look what I can do. <laughs> but what does that have to do with me? No, no. He's got a point. Listen, you guys. You're sort of confusing me, so, uh, be gone. Uh, or, uh, you know, however I get rid of you guys. That'll work. Um, what's with the chimp and the bug? Can we get back to me? Yes, getting back to our MLA test document, I'm gonna give you three reasons why you should not walk away right now, other than you're graded on this. Because throughout high school and college, you are going to be writing papers, and lots of them. In fact, as a senior, you have to write an eight-page paper for your senior project in order to even graduate from Triton. And guess what? It has to be in MLA format. So I'm gonna save you lots and lots of time, lots and lots of headaches, and lots and lots of stress by learning how to set these MLA documents up, and even more importantly, how to create bibliographies and work cited. So go ahead and open a blank new Word document, and let's go ahead and save this, do a file, save as, as MLA test. If you recall, MLA stands for Modern Language Association, and basically it's just a set of rules on how our page or our papers are set up and how they are formatted. So the first thing in an MLA research paper that you need to do is make sure your margins are at one inch on your paper. Now if you've got the ruler showing, that means this, from this left edge over here to where I would first start typing, that should be an inch, and also from the top to where my indentation point goes down, that should be an inch, and that should follow through on the right side and then on the bottom of my page as well. If you want to check these, head to the layout tabs and you'd click margin and make sure we're at one inch for top, left, bottom, and right. So make sure you set your page layout margins to one inch all around. The next thing to do to set up my MLA research paper is to set my formatting correctly. So remember, all formatting stuff is done under the Home tab. And if we look at the Home tab in the ribbon, we've talked about the clipboard group, we've talked about the font group, we've talked about the paragraph group, and we've even talked about this editing group over here. And the last group we haven't talked about is styles. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So a style works kind of like the theme of our page in that it's a group of fonts, font sizes, and line spacing. So if I'm on this normal right now, normal means that my font is going to be in Calibri, it's 11, and if I go over to font spacing, it's at 1.15. If I hovered over this no spacing and clicked it, now if I looked at my spacing, I'd be at 1. So Word has a lot of preset styles for us that you can look through if you want. 
MLA research papers are always going to be done in Times New Roman font that is size 12 with line spacing that's double or 2.0. And we could open up Word and we could go over here and we could change our font to Times New Roman. I could change it to 12. I could change my line spacing to double, which is 2.0. And then I could be on my merry way, right? That just took me, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. Imagine having to do that every single time you wanted to type a paper for a class. Gets kind of old, doesn't it? Having to do it over and over and over and over again. So, instead of changing it manually over and over and over and over again, we can change the normal style in Word so that anytime I open up a new document, normal is actually going to be Times New Roman 12 double spacing instead of Calibri 11 and the 1.15. So in order to do this, go up to normal, right click on it, and do modify. Okay, because we want to create our own. And let's actually maybe name it normal MLA because we want to do it in MLA. And remember, our font is actually Times New Roman, 12, not bold, not italic, not underlined. It is going to be left aligned. And then here's our line spacing. And we want double. So we actually want this third line here. Now, if you're unsure what is what, down here at the bottom, it gives you a written rewrite of everything. So it says Times New Roman. It says 12 point. It says line spacing is double. It also says there's a space after each paragraph. We do not want spaces after our paragraphs. So where you see these little arrows pointing up and down, we want to click down and squish it until there is no after. Now, right now, if I look down at this option, this is changing the style only in this document. I want to make sure that this MLA style happens every single time I open a new document. So check the button that says New Documents based on this template and click OK. Now notice it will have changed ours. So it changed from Calibri to Times, changed from 11 to 12, and it changed from 1.15 to 2. And if I switch to no spacing and then switch back to normal, it's still that. If I opened a new document, I'm going to do Control N. My new document is Times New Roman 12, and there is double line spacing. So that is awesome. That saves me just a quick 30 seconds every single time I want to start an MLA document just by updating that style. So again, make sure you're back on this MLA test document. Make sure you've gone up, you've right-clicked, you've modified our page style so that you're in Times New Roman, 12 font size, double spacing, and you've squished down so there's no line spacing afterwards. If you have all that, we're ready to start writing our paper. And the first thing before we even get to start typing our paper is that we have to put our name on our paper. Now, MLA is done in a specific title block, and the first thing that our title block starts with is our name. So go ahead and type your name, then press Enter. Right after your name comes the teacher's name of whatever class you have. So this is my class. After the teacher's name comes the class you're in. We're in Computer Apps. Press Enter again. And the last thing that we write for our title block is the date. And instead of writing it as October 10th or October 11th, we write it as the day first, so 10, then the month, October, and then the year. And then go ahead and press enter again. 
So all MLA research papers have a title block, and the title block has four things. Your name, the teacher's name, the class, and then the date. And the date gets written as the date first, then the month, and then the year. Then go ahead and press enter. The next thing on our paper is our title. Now titles for MLA get centered, so go ahead click center. And how many people right now are thinking, oh, titles get underlined? Ah, ah, ah. Not in MLA. <laughs> oh, can I have a moment, please? Turn away. <laughs> okay, okay, all better. Go, go, go. Go back to the funny. I'm bringing you down. So in MLA documents, the only thing that happens with the title is that it's centered. So title of my super sweet research paper. Boom, baby! So this is how our research paper is set up. I've got a title block with my four things over here. My title is centered, not underlined, and then I press enter. When I type my paper, am I going to want my paper to be centered? Probably not. So make sure that your paper is on left align. And each paragraph of your paper is always going to start with a paragraph indent. And there's two ways that you can do a paragraph indent. You can either just press the tab key and it will indent. And notice when you press that tab key, if I look up on my ruler, I've got this little triangle up here that's moved. If I hover over, that tells me the first line indent is at the half mark, okay? If I backspace that tab, that first line indent has then moved over. If I press tab, it's at the 0.5. Backspace, it's at the zero. If you want to, the second way to change that indent is just to click the top little arrow and drag out to the 0.5. So every new paragraph in a research paper does get a first line indent of 0.5. So if this was my research paper, and all of a sudden I hit enter. If I've done it where I've clicked and dragged, it automatically brings me to the 0.5 every time I press enter. If I've done it where I've pressed just tab, I have to manually hit tab every time I start a new paragraph. So I actually like to do it where I drag that first line indent guy out to the 0.5. And that way, I can just be typing along, typing along, typing along. If I'm done with my paragraph, I hit enter. And I'm typing along, typing along, typing along. And it's going to do that first line indent for me. And I don't have to press tab. So let's just run over this pre-flight checklist again of setting up our paper. So the first thing we came in, we did, was we went to page layout. We changed our margins to one inch all around. Then we set up our document style so that it was Times New Roman 12. It was double spacing, and there should be no spaces after our paragraph. So see how it says add? If I had spaces, it would actually say remove. So we make sure that this both says add. I have no spaces after my paragraph. Then I went on, I did my title block. That was my name, my teacher's name, my class and the date. Then I did my title, which was centered and not underlined. And then I clicked over, I left aligned, and I dragged my first line indent out to the point five. The last thing in our pre-flight checklist for setting up an MLA document is to create a header with my last name and the page number. Now there are two ways I can edit or insert a header. The first is by going to the insert tab and choosing header. And if you just click header, Word does give you some built in options, but we actually want to type our own. So we would just click edit header. So as soon as I've done insert header, edit header, I've got this header with the dotted blue line the rest of my document looks grayed out, and I am able to type in at the top of my page. Let's think about this for a second. Where's your head? It's 
at the top of your body, right? So the header is at the top of the page. If I was doing a footer, where are your feet? Feet are at the bottom of your body. So the footer is at the bottom of the page. Now the header and footer is going to be the same on every single page. So if you do a header or a footer, whatever's in the header or whatever's in the footer is going to show up on every single page. The other thing that just happened, the ribbon changed. I'm now in a header and footer tools tab, and I can do a lot of different stuff with my header and footer up here. Just because I'm in the header and footer tools tab doesn't mean I can't go back to the home tab and do any formatting I want. I just have to make sure that I'm in the header and footer tools tab if I want to do something specific to the header and footer. So in an MLA document, your header is your last name and the page number. And it's always actually right aligned. So I'm just going to start by going to the home tab, right aligning, typing my last name, hitting space, and then let's type the page number out. This is page one. Now, if I'm done with the header, I can either close it by in header and design. I can click close header and footer, and I'm out of that header. Or let's say I wanted to go back in and edit that header and exit out another way. So the first time we went to insert, we went over to header, and then we went to edit header. And to get out, we clicked close. If you want to get out without hitting close if you hover over it tells you you can also double click the document area to return to editing it so if i don't want to click close header i could just double click and it brings me back to my document double clicking also works to edit the header so if you're up here and you double click it brings me to my header so if you don't like having to go to the insert tab just do the double clicking thing now let's say i'm going along typing my document Cool, it's awesome, it's amazing, yay, and all of a sudden I get to the second page. The header is going to appear on that second page, so if you have a header, it will appear on every single page. Now I'm looking at this header and it says one, but I'm on page two. What's up with that? Well, remember, when I went in the header, I physically typed out the one. So it's going to put the one on every single page. If you want the page number on your header, you actually have to insert, guess what, the page number. I'm going to go in and delete the one. This time, I want to make sure I'm on my header and footer tools. I'm going to go over to page number. And it gives me some options. It gives me top of the page, and then it will do a built-in number. It gives me bottom of the page. It tells me page margins. Then it says current position. We want the page number to be right where that blinking insertion point is. So that's actually right at our current position. And all it needs to be is a plain number. So if I click that, now it's inserted a 1. I double click to close and I scroll down to that second page. Now, page two, it's automatically updated it to page two. Well, let's say I don't actually want this header on here. I could double click into the header and I could do header, remove header. And if I closed and I scrolled up, now my header's gone. So remember, the header and footer are both things that you can add to every single page. Now, we do want that header up there with our last name and page number that's right aligned. So I just double click to get into my header. I'm going to go on the Home tab, right align, type my last name, space, and now I want to insert a page number. And that page number has to be part of the header, so make sure you're in the header tools design page number and I want it at that current position just want one page number 
Yes, if that's good, I can close my header and my footer. So my MLA document has a header with my last name and the page number in the upper right-hand corner. It has a title block with my name, the teacher's name, the class, and the date. It has a center title that is not underlined, and it has every paragraph indented 2.5 inches. Make sure that that's what you have so far on your research paper, and if you have some fake sample text out here, that's awesome too, just so I can tell that you know how to indent that first line of every paragraph. If you've got this glorious fake research paper set up, Go ahead, do a final file save, because we are going to use this in part two, where we talk about adding sources and creating a works cited or a bibliography for our research paper. So do save MLA test once you have this all set up and you've got some fake text in there. Do not upload it, because we're going to use it for part two. <laughs> Big, dumb, and tone deaf. I am so glad I was unconscious for all of this. Mission accomplished. Ha! Boom, baby! <laughs>